Today, we're heading way, way back in time, and we're diving into the world of a certain type of creature that has fascinated people for generations, and it still fascinates people to this day. But before we go any further, I've got a quick question for our favorite test subject, Gustav. Can you run fast? Mm -hmm. That's great to hear, because once again, things might get a little intense for you today. And let me tell you, you will not be alone this time. Huh? Uh, no, it won't be Gustine, but you will have some company, that's for sure. And trust me, they've got their own kind of, uh, charm, let's say. Huh? All right, I'll spill the beans. Today, you're going to be hanging out with dinosaurs. <gasps> oh, come on, Gustav, don't panic. I did prepare something for you, a proper explorer outfit, just for the occasion. Mm-hmm. Before we go any further, let's remember that what we know about dinosaurs is based on theories, sometimes even ones that contradict each other, and the theories are constantly evolving. For this video, we're sticking with the most widely accepted theories from the early 2020s. So what do you think? Will Gustav end up stuck between a T-Rex's teeth? Impaled by a Triceratops horn? Crushed by a Ceroposidon? Or maybe shredded by a Velociraptor? Or who knows, maybe he'll make it out in one piece after all? On that note, time to put those legs to work and let's answer today's big question. Being chased by dinosaurs, what's it like? So first off, if we're talking about being chased, that means our guinea pig will only be dealing with dinosaurs that live on land. So we can rule out any flying dinosaurs like the pterodactyl and Archaeopteryx right away. And lucky for you, Gustav, you're even off the hook for the Quetzalcoatlus. I'm sorry, what? A massive creature you might have seen very recently in the movie Jurassic World Rebirth. Quick side note, if you've seen the film, let me know what you thought about it in the comments, because personally, I wasn't that impressed. Anyway, that's flying dinosaur from the movie, the Quetzalcoatlus, it weighs over 440 pounds, or over 200 kilos, and stands more than 33 feet tall, that's over 10 meters tall. So yeah, we're definitely dodging a bullet there, keeping the challenge to land dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. We can also wave goodbye to all the marine dinosaurs. And just so you know, the Pliosaur was over 43 feet long or over 13 meters long, and could snap a human clean in half with one bite. And believe it or not, it's technically still possible to be chased by a dinosaur today. Yep, not everyone realizes this, but there are still a few species around. They might be small, but they're surprisingly fierce. These little dinos weigh between 7 to 11 pounds, or 3 to 5 kilos, and can hit speeds of nearly 9 miles per hour, or 15 kilometers per hour. They're called Gallos Gallos, and you'd better not mess with them because otherwise, well, not much would happen. You might have guessed by now that I'm talking about good old chickens, the proud feathered descendants of dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, so that's funny to you. Uh, Gustav, don't get too cocky just yet. We're about to have you chased by the largest land animal Earth has ever seen. This beast was 115 feet long or 35 meters long. That's about the size of three city buses and stood a whopping 26 feet tall or 8 meters tall. In other words, as tall as a three-story building. Its name? The Sorrow Poseidon. So, you ready, Gustav? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Since I'm feeling generous today, I'll give him a 10 meter head start. And hey, with the adrenaline kicking in, his speed's getting a nice little boost too. That said, our poor guinea pig doesn't realize he's exhausting himself for nothing. Sure, mentally he's probably freaking out, but physically, he's not in any real danger. Because this big old dinosaur moves incredibly slow, most likely no faster than 3 miles per hour or 5 kilometers per hour, which is basically walking speed for a human. So in theory, Gustav doesn't even need to run to stay ahead. A brisk walk would do the trick just fine. Here's something you should know. The Sorrow Poseidon isn't actually capable of running. During its growth spurt, this giant could gain up to 88 pounds or 40 kilos a day. To keep up with this insane growth, its bones had to develop really fast, and the only way to make this possible was for the bones to be hollow. At full size, the Sorrow Poseidon could weigh around 60 tons. That's 132,000 pounds. That's the equivalent of 10 African elephants. 
if a Sauroposeidon ever tried to run, its bones probably wouldn't be able to handle the pressure and they would just snap. So yeah, that's why the biggest land animal in history wasn't built for speed. Technically, it could just stretch out its neck and take a bite out of Gustav, but it wouldn't bother because the Sauroposeidon is a herbivore. What this dinosaur is really into is whatever grows on trees. And on top of that, he's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. His brain is about a thousand times smaller than its body. And to put it simply, he's pretty much just programmed to do two things eat plants and get bigger. Honestly, there's a good chance he doesn't even notice our little Gustav. That said, this dinosaur is so massive that the ground literally shakes when he walks. If Gustav were to trip and not get up in time, he could totally get crushed. But luckily, our guinea pig is quick on his feet, so he manages to dodge disaster. So yeah, being chased by a Sauron Poseidon, not actually that bad. All right then, time to bring in a different dino. <laughs> Let's move on to something a bit faster. How about a Triceratops? You are probably familiar with this one already thanks to Jurassic Park. It's a big herbivore roughly the size of a London double-decker bus. It's got three horns on its head, two of which are over a meter long. At first glance, it might look like some kind of prehistoric rhinoceros, but the two animals could not be more different. For starters, the Triceratops belongs to the Sauropsida class, which includes reptiles and birds, while rhinos are mammals, a totally different animal group altogether. So technically, the Triceratops has no real reason to chase Gustav either. Triceratops are herbivores and only attack predators in self-defense. And honestly, Gustav's not exactly big or threatening, so he shouldn't be much of a concern for the Triceratops. But he could still get skewered in one clean hit by a horn, so for the sake of science, let's say Gustav did do something to annoy it. Like stealing one of its eggs for a massive omelet. Yep, big mistake. So, ready to run? <gasps> like before, we'll give Gustav a little head start. We're not that cruel. As for the Triceratops speed, estimates vary, but once it gets going, it could reach up to 19 miles per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast. Only athletes can run at that pace or faster. And when it comes to endurance, the Triceratops has the edge. So sure, Gustav might sprint faster, but he would not be able to keep up for long. But we humans do have one key advantage over a Triceratops, agility. Yeah, not easy. By zigzagging, Gustav might just manage to shake him off and get out of his field of vision and eventually lose him completely. Now, if the creature had caught up with him, would he have been impaled by his horn? Hard to say. Those horns are built to attack animals around its own size or even larger prey. And just a reminder, we're talking London double-decker bus proportions here. So honestly, Gustav would probably get trampled before he got skewered. So yeah, once again, our guinea pigs got a decent shot at making it out alive. But this means it's time to bring in a way more dangerous opponent. One that's definitely not vegetarian. Well, Gustav, after outrunning two dinosaurs, you've definitely proven yourself. That's a solid performance. This time, we're giving you a real challenge, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. <gasps> yeah, I know, I know, but at some point, we gotta put you to the test for real. The other dinosaurs, honestly, they were a walk in the park. Just to refresh your memory, the famous T-Rex stands 20 feet tall or 6 meters tall, stretching 43 feet or 13 meters long and its bite force is equivalent to getting stomped by an elephant. And even if you survive that first chomp of a T-Rex, sorry to say, you'll probably still be on your way to death's doorstep. The T-Rex is a carnivore, and it wasn't uncommon for chunks of meat from previous meals to get stuck between its teeth. That meat would rot and decay inside the T-Rex's mouth, which besides giving it absolutely vile breath, also turned its jaws into a breeding ground for bacteria and microbes. So when a T-Rex bites its prey and that prey somehow survives, that wound is extremely likely to get infected and eventually it's game over. In fact, some researchers believe this whole bite now, infection later strategy might have actually been one of the T-Rex's main hunting methods, especially when it came to tougher opponents like, let's say, a Triceratops. And just a quick side note, unlike what you've seen in Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, recent studies suggest that the T-Rex didn't actually roar like it's known to. The sound it makes probably went more like this. 
which yeah, is a little less terrifying, even if it's still one heck of a growl. Turns out roaring is more of a mammal thing, like lions for example, and pop culture just kind of borrowed that and gave it to the T-Rex. To find out what the T-Rex really sounded like, scientists studied the vocalization of birds. And no, not the cute, chirpy kind. Think more like the low, guttural rumble of an ostrich. So sure, it's not quite as fearsome as a cinematic roar, but it's still not the kind of sound that makes you feel safe. Huh? So, you'd rather hide than run, Gustav? Well, bad news for you, because hiding's not gonna cut it. Because the T-Rex has an insanely powerful sense of smell. Like, probably the strongest in the entire animal kingdom. Yep, the T-Rex could actually use each nostril independently, and the scents that entered were funneled through nasal cavities packed with receptors that sent detailed information straight to its brain. And you might be wondering, why two nostrils working separately? Well, same reason we use two ears to locate sound, or two eyes for depth perception. It allowed the T-Rex to map smells in 3D and pinpoint exactly where they were coming from. For comparison, even a professionally trained bloodhound doesn't come close to this level of smelling ability. <sighs> so even if Gustave found the perfect hiding spot, he still wouldn't stand a chance that nose would sniff him out in seconds. The only way to truly avoid detection, be far enough away that your scent does not reach the T-Rex. Which unfortunately for you Gustave isn't the case right now, so I'd suggest you start running cause the T-Rex is here. <laughs> You can probably imagine the adrenaline spike our poor test subject is feeling right now, terrified and in good shape. Gustav manages to sprint at about 12 to 16 miles per hour or 20 to 25 kilometers per hour. Some of you might be thinking, wait, shouldn't he just stand still? After all, in Jurassic Park, the T-Rex couldn't see you if you didn't move. Yeah, don't trust the movies too much on this one. The T-Rex actually had great eyesight. In fact, it could see in 3D. So does that mean Gustav is doomed? Not necessarily. Huh? Paleontologists are still debating the issue, but according to some theories and contrary to popular belief, the T-Rex actually wasn't that fast. According to many experts, the T-Rex was built for endurance and could probably maintain a steady pace of around 9 miles per hour or 15 kilometers per hour. But pushing beyond that was risky, because well, the T-Rex was massive. Estimates suggest it weighed between 6 to 7 tons. That's about 12,000 to 14,000 pounds. And even though it was incredibly strong, its joints weren't made for speed. Once it would start running, the T-Rex lacked stability. And while it might have managed short bursts of up to 12 miles per hour or 20 kilometers per hour, anything faster could have seriously damaged its joints. A bad fall could have been fatal. The T-Rex might have taken that risk for a bigger meal, but for him, a human is more of a light snack. It's like a cat chasing a cockroach. Not really worth the effort. So technically, yes, you could survive a T-Rex encounter. Ah, uh, time to find Vistav a new opponent. Mm, and this one might just be the last. <laughs> So Gustav, I imagine that after escaping a Sauro Poseidon, a Triceratops, and a T-Rex, you were probably feeling pretty confident about your final opponent, right? Good for you Gustav, and I have to say, this last opponent isn't all that intimidating. He's just under 6.5 feet long, or 2 meters long, and only about 2.5 feet tall, or 75 centimeters tall. Basically, he barely reaches your thigh. Plus, he looks kind of cute. He's covered in feathers, and his name might sound familiar. The Velociraptor. Now yes, if you're thinking of Jurassic Park, think again. The movie version is nothing like the real thing, either in size or appearance. That idea of the Velociraptor is totally off. We're pretty sure by now that these dinosaurs looked a lot more like birds than lizards. And in fact, the Velociraptors you see in the movies more closely resemble another species called Deinonychus. Alright then, now that you've been properly introduced, Gustav, you thinking it's time to make a run for it? Alright, let's see what's going on here. Just like with the previous dinosaurs, Gustav's got a bit of a head start and the adrenaline is kicking in to boost his performance. And here's the thing, the Velociraptor may be smaller, but it's way faster than any of the other dinosaurs that have chased Gustav so far. It can reach speeds of up to 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. Track and field fans might point out that Usain Bolt managed to hit 27 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour at his peak. 
So technically, a human could outrun a Velociraptor. Sure, a Velociraptor runs at 27 miles per hour under normal conditions, but let's be honest, Gustav is not Usain Bolt. He's definitely not running that fast. Meanwhile, the Velociraptor is capable of short bursts of up to 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour, and no human, not even the best trained athlete, can match that. Oh, that's it, Gustav, run, run faster. And you can try your best, but there's no way you're outrunning a Velociraptor. And unlike the other dinosaurs that didn't really care about you, the Velociraptor, yeah, you're definitely on the menu. As you probably know, Velociraptors are carnivores, and they're not shy about going after prey much bigger than themselves. That said, Gustav's actually kind of lucky here, because normally Velociraptors hunt in packs. They surround their target and pounce together, but this time there's only one, so maybe Gustav has a shot. Should he try zigzagging like he did with the Triceratops? Nope. That only worked because the Triceratops was built like a tank. So massive, it couldn't turn easily. But the Velociraptor, it's way smaller, way more agile, and the second it's close enough, it'll leap on Gustav to knock him off balance. Think of it like a big, aggressive dog going in for the tackle. Now, Velociraptors are usually familiar with their prey and know exactly where they're most vulnerable. For example, scientists once found the fossil of a Velociraptor mid-fight with the Protoceratops. That's a creature around 6.5 feet long or 2 meters long and weighing up to 330 pounds, that's 150 kilos, compared to just 33 to 44 pounds or 15 to 20 kilos for the Velociraptor. Yeah, the Velociraptor is about the size of a medium-sized Labrador. Since Gustav isn't a species the raptor has ever encountered before, I can assure you, the Velociraptor doesn't know Gustav's weak spots yet. But odds are, it'll go for the same place it usually targets on other animals, the neck. And for that, it's got a terrifying weapon, a 6-inch or 15-centimeter long claw that it uses to literally stab its victims. No surprise, it does some serious damage with that thing, especially when it goes for the throat. Yeah, things aren't looking good for poor Gustav because fighting a Velociraptor is a bit like trying to wrestle an aggressive, unhinged dog. If you're not armed or able to defend yourself, well, you're toast. On top of that, the Velociraptor will probably call in some backup to help turn Gustav into lunch. But hey, maybe, just maybe, if our test subject puts up enough of a fight, the Velociraptor might give up and look for an easier meal. Except that's only if Gustav had something to defend himself with. <laughs> Clearly, this is where it ends. The Velociraptor finally catches him, pounces, and with one well-aimed swipe of its claw, slashes Gustav in the jugular. Gustav bleeds out while the Velociraptor starts feasting. This lovely little raptor will probably go on to munch through Gustav's intestines, tear into his organs, devour his still-beating hearts, and then the cold remains of Gustav will most likely be eaten by other creatures in this Jurassic jungle before being pooped out and fossilized. There you have it. So, in the end, running into a dinosaur isn't quite as fatal as you might think. In theory, a human could survive a face-off with a Sauroposeidon, a Triceratops, and even a T-Rex. But a run-in with a Velociraptor? That's one likely to be your last. Of course, before we wrap things up, just a reminder, our knowledge about dinosaurs is still incomplete and mostly based on theories. After all, they've been gone for millions of years. So everything we think we know about dinosaurs could change with each new discovery. In any case, for our dear Gustav, one specific encounter was one too many, but keeping him dead probably wouldn't help us much for the rest of our experiments. So it's time to bring our brave test subject back to life and get him back on his feet. Huge thanks to him for putting his life on the line to satisfy my slightly morbid curiosity. Now, let's let him rest. He'll need his strength for the next experiment, which, by the way, has absolutely nothing to do with the Jurassic era. 